This is a brief introduction to a new project. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, then you've probably realized that I mostly enjoy working on discrete design equipment. The more discrete, the better, and the more complex, the better. And also my favorite uh, manufacturer was the vintage HP era. So the old uh, 9830, I've done a series of videos on repairing one of those. I actually repaired quite a few, I own three of them, and they're a lot of fun to work on. Very discreet in design, there's no central processor as such, and it's all discrete logic. And so uh, I was quite excited over the Christmas break to receive this gift. Uh, huge thanks to Dave for sending this to me. Thanks a lot, Dave. It is really appreciated. And um, some of you may have already guessed what this might be. You might recognise it if you have one of these. But this is an HP piece of equipment. It is a discrete design. And this has been at the top of my uh, wish list or bucket list for a very long time. I've worked on quite a few of these but I've never owned one before but this is now uh, mine so I will be having a lot of fun with this. I don't know what state it's in in terms of its uh, functionality. I suspect it's going to need a lot of attention uh, but without further ado I'll get it taken out of its case and we'll have a brief look at it. So hopefully you'll be able to see this okay, it's uh, quite dark in here. I've had to close the curtains because the sun is shining through the window, but hopefully you can see enough to recognize the machine. It is of course an HP 9845B computer. And as I say, this has been at the top of my wish list for a very long time for a number of reasons, partly because of the era it was built in and the way it was designed, I think the HP design engineers of the time were uh, very good at what they did. Massively over-engineered a lot of the machines that they uh, put together and this is no exception. This weighs about 45 kilograms with the monitor on. We'll have a look at the monitor in a minute. Um, Dave did send me a monitor with this as well. Um, but this is a, a very interesting machine. It's quite discreet. If you saw my series on the 9830 which is a similar type of concept to this, albeit without the CRT monitor. Um, what they did when they progressed, this is a, a later machine of course, this came out, it was kind of finished in its design, um, initial design, around 1979, I think it was first available around 1980, and although I've said it's a 9845B, it's arguably a 9845T. It depends on how you look at the options that are fitted to it. This particular one has the two tape drives. It's got a thermal printer. And um, as I was saying, the 9830 was uh, totally discreet in its design. It was all logic chips. There were no uh, real custom devices other than the ROMs. And what they did when they um, continued the design is they consolidated a lot of the design work they'd done and they put a lot of the, for example, the uh, processor modules which were separate boards containing logic devices in the 9830, they combined all that, developed it and put it into hybrid modules. So this machine contains a number of hybrid modules and they're manufactured from an obtainium so if they fail, they're pretty much impossible to replace. It might be um, possible to design uh, a replacement to uh, get the machine up and running, um, but the chances of finding any of those uh, hybrid modules is pretty much zero, so fingers crossed they're going to work. I haven't tried turning this on yet, you've seen everything I have. Um, but uh, this also has a very interesting power supply. The supplies in these were very unusual and they were very pessimistic. They're one of these supplies that the slightest little thing and they completely shut themselves down. So the slight fault, uh, loose connection here or there and the machine will just completely power itself off, which is quite nice in some ways, um, but also makes them quite difficult to work on. That was, I think, done to try and protect the electronics 
Unfortunately, it doesn't always work that well, and uh, quite often they take out their own um, ROMs and RAMs, and uh, these do have quite a high failure rate. And I think a lot of it is they've been in storage for a long time, they're taken out of storage, powered up, and that is almost certainly going to destroy something. So I'm not going to power this up for quite a long time. I suspect this will be quite a long video series. I'm going to take the same approach I did with the 9830. I'm going to completely strip it down to a bare chassis, go through all of the boards one by one, checking them as much as I can, and then we'll start trying to bring it back to life. Um, but as I said, we'll, we'll do this uh, step by step. So what I'll do right now is I'll just take the top cover off so you can have a look inside. I'm not going to do any uh, repair work in this video or any further work. We'll just have a quick look and see what's in here. So what we have inside is quite a nice layout to get to various parts. The power supply is a bit of a pain, but it does come out fairly easy. It's just a few screws and it will lift out. That's this whole centre section. And the uh, main cards, the uh, main CPU cards are in these racks. There's a rack either side. And this really contains two processors rather than one, but I'll go into that in more detail as we start the repair. There are also two ROM drawers, and I'll explain why there are two again in uh, a future video. But these contain the ROM modules. So these are really effectively the ROMs that the system uses uh, either as options or even as system uh, ROMs. So you can put in different ROMs, these are little ROM packs. And um, I don't know what's in here yet, I haven't checked them. Okay, but as I say, we'll look at these in more detail as we start going through the repair. So we've got the thermal printer, it's quite a big thermal printer as you can see. And we've got the interface, these two pedestals are for the uh, CRT, the monitor, that sits on top and plugs onto these, there's a couple of connectors. Uh, the monitor itself is fairly complex and again we'll look at that in more detail. Um, as we start going through the repairs. These cards at the front are interface cards and we have the two tape drives. These are almost identical drives to the ones we've seen on other uh, HP machines, the ones that I've modified for different tapes and chances are we'll need to do the same modification and repair with these two tape drives. And um, then we can run it with uh, different types of tape as well as the standard tapes. Normally there would be some filters in these two vents at the bottom and um, one of the weaknesses with this particular machine design is they were meant to be used in an office environment and as I said I've repaired a few and most of them seem to have been overheated and I think what happens is there are two powerful fans at the back, you'll hear this when we eventually power it up, um, the fans are quite powerful and they draw air through the two racks but the air comes in, the machine is sealed apart from these two vents. There's normally a, like a, a foam a filter on here, but they disintegrate and uh, disappear. And uh, they've obviously been gone for a long time. But what can happen is people will slide pieces of paper underneath these uh, just to uh, keep them out of the way on the desk. And then when you turn the fan on, because this is quite close to the desk, the paper gets sucked up onto the uh, inlet and it completely seals it and then the machine rapidly overheats. These draw quite a lot of power and then they overheat and um, then all bets are off, all sorts of damage can occur. There's also a huge heat sink underneath here for the print head, it generates a lot of heat. So overall the machine can get fairly hot fairly quickly if it's not being blasted with air. Also notice these two heat sinks down here are directly in line, so these interfaces also have a tendency to fail if these vents get blocked or if the fans fail. So quite an interesting machine inside, it's quite nice to work on because you can, if you've got some risers especially, you can um, work on the cards individually and it's quite easy to get to most of the electronics while the machine is running. So um, the interface cards for example, you can get to pretty much everything. Now they are stacked so although it looks like a single card here, there are two more cards underneath this and again we'll have a look at this as we start to work on the machine. So I'll get this out of the way, we'll have a quick look at the monitor, you see what condition that's in, but um, it's looking quite uh, interesting so far. 
So there we have the monitor. Again, very robustly put together. It, this weighs about 10 kilos, so it's quite a heavy uh, piece of kit. Um, very thick metal base, and this has two connectors on the bottom. So you can see the two connectors, they go onto the pedestals we looked at on the main unit. And it also has the cheat sheets, so that like with the 9830, you have these cheat sheets. We'll have a look at those in a future video. Uh, one thing you'll notice with this, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, but it has fairly severe cataracts, so we'll need to uh, deal with that if the monitor is viable. So if this CRT is uh, functional, then I'll fix this. You've seen me um, fixing cataracts in uh, earlier videos. Um, not particularly difficult to do, it's just a bit dangerous, but um, I'll make sure the tube works before we go to the time and trouble of doing that. But the monitor itself is in very good condition. No real damage to it, no real uh, severe wear and tear. I'm not going to try plugging it onto the main unit yet. I want to check to make sure that the connectors aren't damaged first. They're fairly fragile and if there's any damage to them when you drop this heavy monitor onto the connector, it can damage either the connector on the main unit or the connector on the monitor or both. So I won't do that until uh, we've checked it out. And uh, so I'll strip this down as well and make sure that everything inside is as it should be. But the interface for these is quite complex. There's quite a lot inside this, more than you might expect. But uh, again, we'll look at that in a future video. The only real sign of uh, wear and tear on this is along the front edge of the main unit. It's had quite a, a rough life by the look of it. But the rest of the unit's in very good condition. So I'm really looking forward to getting uh, stuck into this, see if we can get it up and running. I do suspect it will be quite a long video series, but hopefully it should be fairly interesting.